it's the the slogan I've put on the main, on the first page of my website is this: you know, the world needs you as you are, not as you think or have been told you should be. <laughs> Because uh, that's definitely also what I see is that you know, human beings are fantastic by nature, but we twist them so much. We, there's so much uh, twisting of the mind and twisting of the. <laughs> that we end up with violence, we end up with people who become ego-centered when they just want to blossom, they just want to give. And, uh, and it's been my journey. I, self-love also has been the journey because it's, uh, it's definitely the, the rooting of every, every other good stuff that comes from the human heart and from the human soul. It, it's rooted in self-love. And, uh, and it's a journey, self-love. It's a... Uh, uh, I'm working as a coach also since a few years, and so I see, I see many people looking at self-love in terms of good food, good clothes, good makeup, good, no good life. <laughs> But uh, to me, the journey of self-love has been a journey of, uh, of acceptance of every bit of myself, including the... No, I, I don't say the name because I want to remain polite, but including the shadows, the, the, very, the very dark side of myself also. And to see in that, that uh, behind that thing that we call darkness, that we call, uh, there is something extraordinarily beautiful that also wants to come to life. But that has, that has been hurt, that has been repressed, that has been oppressed, and therefore has turned into an energy that is really disturbing us. And, uh, and uh, so my journey is, is a bit of a very, it's a very unconventional journey because I, I dropped from mainstream, I was 18 years old. I grew up in Africa, and uh, all my time in Africa, I was told, you know, when, <laughs> when you're 18, you'll go back to France and you will meet civilization. And the day I came back to France at 18 to meet civilization, I looked at it and said, you call that civilization? No way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I see a machine. I see a big machine. Where is life? Where is the warmth? Where is the, the vibrance? And so I dropped And I didn't know what I was going to find. I had no clue that there were alternatives. I knew absolutely nothing. Went into all kind of trouble, like young people do, of course. <laughs> and uh, 27 years old, I had a massive spiritual experience that fell from the sky. And, uh, and then I embarked on a very, very strong uh, path of spiritual discipline, Raj Yuga. And I lived 10 years as a monk, then I was sent as a monk, in inverted coma, not the, not the, not the formal monks, as a very busy monkhood. <laughs> We're running a retreat center in the UK, in, in, in the Oxford area, very busy, and really a life of 3.30 in the morning up, 10.30, 11 at night sleeping, and non-stop in the middle, 20 minutes rest, <laughs> including service, meditation, study, etc. And that was a fantastic training for me. And, uh, and then I ended up in Vietnam to open a meditation center. And that's where I really pushed my, my exploration into all the dimensions of the being. Because I had realized that uh, Raj Yoga had only given me mental tools, like concentration, focus, determination, positive thinking. And I had no, no awareness of the heart. I was a loving person, I was a good person. <laughs> But... <laughs> The heart is another story, you know, and that's where the shadows are sitting, that's where the pain is sitting, that's where I'm... And so after 20 years of, uh, of celibacy, because that's one of the, the conditions of, uh, of monkhood, I ended up in... Uh, I opened a relationship and, uh, with a woman, and that's where the whole thing of the heart just blasted open, and it was magnificent, but it was like the, the most terrible period of my life, because all the pain came out. And uh, I, was, uh, I was 45 at the time, I was uh, 47, almost 50. <laughs> I was supposed to be the, the big guy opening a new meditation center in Hanoi. I ended up like a, a five years old boy lost <laughs> and a 16 years old adolescent jealous and anxious and completely panicked at life. <laughs> and so that really threw me into the world of the heart where I where finally I discovered self-love. Because as long as our heart has not, uh, has not been touched and opened properly and accepted properly, then self-love is, uh, is incomplete. And uh, so that's the journey. I mean, it's a, it's a long journey. 
And what I do in terms of my work, uh, I, I, share, uh, I share my journey because I'm, uh, I'm completely uneducated. <laughs> and uh, the only education I have is my own experience. Eh? The, the 10 years I spent as a monk, we had no books, no internet, we had access to nothing. Only core teachings and practice and service. And it was frustrating in some ways, but it was fantastic in other ways because there's no distraction. You know, you dig in, you dig in, you dig in, you dig in, and you have only yourself to, to read. <laughs> only your own mind, your own story, your own relationship. So I started to observe, I started to, you know, to pick up any little thing that could help me build my understanding. And, and that's how I learned. And then when I was in Vietnam, I learned from uh, being in a position of teaching, so-called. And, uh, and when you teach, you discover so much also. You learn so much. So I'm, uh, inner focusing is, uh, it's really looking at all the dimensions of a, of a human being. Mind, heart, energy, body, soul, spirit, relationship with God, and relationship with that world here on the horizontal plane. And, uh, and through my journey, I developed uh, very specific uh, maps and methodologies to address all those different centers and to bring them in synergy. Because inner focusing is about bringing your mind, your heart, your energy, your soul, your body together and, and, and focusing that, focusing that into a very purposeful action, into a very uh, response evil action, into a very loving action, heart-based action, soul-based action. And my big passion in life, uh, that's been my journey also. I consider myself for many years as a, as a freedom fighter, <laughs> decolonizing my own world, and I fought for that, like, uh, you know. And, and that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm doing for other people. That's really my focus, to, to get them to reclaim their own world, their own inner world. And, uh, and when they've done that, then to help others do the same for themselves. <laughs> and I'm very passionate about this because uh, I see so much beauty in, the, in people, so much beauty. And yet I see that beauty is just left, you know, like uh, it's not, it's, it's a lost resource in so many lives. And people have, they have that magnificence and I don't know what to do, they don't even know that it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and that really disturbs me. That really disturbs me. So I have a bad habit of speaking too much, so today I will come back to self-discipline and shut up. <laughs> I hope it's not been too fast because shortness of time is very stressful for me. <laughs>